So uh, Paul Graham has talked about used you guys as this example is of you know really attacking very very difficult problems and people that he he, he uses comparison of how many like recipe websites he's gotten you know how many pitches he's gotten over the years versus no one ever pitched this idea so and because it was so big it was you you're solving such a huge problem um and wh where did you even start i mean where where does something like that even begin um so so we didn't really know uh where to start uh and like i, I definitely wouldn't pretend that we did uh and I mean, I would have started by like crying, in, you know, in the fetal position or something. I mean, it's like, you know, uh, did you? It w it's so just so you so and so your brother, yeah, right? So, 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 so basically, we faked it. Um, so what we did was um, we decided to go on holiday uh, and just like go hack somewhere. Uh, and maybe I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, um, but this is guy uh, uh, Mache, and I'm gonna totally. Um, like mess he may be his, here, so... Yeah, I was gonna, I'm going to totally mess up his surname, but it, it's something like Sedlowski or Chedlowski or something like that. I apologize, Matt, if you ever see this. Uh, his website is idlewords.com, and, uh, and he's a really good writer, and he um, he wrote this, these, this series of blog posts about Buenos Aires uh, and how it's like the, the best place ever to go and hack because it's really cheap and everything's open really late and there's like Wi-Fi everywhere <laughs> and the climate's really nice and everything. and so. John and I were facing this winter in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, which is which is definitely not like that in, in basically any respect. Uh, and so we decided to go to Buenos Aires and just um, like hack all day in cafes on trying to build a prototype here. And so we did that, and it turns out to be basically exactly as described. And so if ever like you just want to go and like work on something sort of single-mindedly for a month, I cannot recommend uh, Buenos <laughs> Aires more highly. We spent like ten dollars a day, and the weather was gorgeous. And like bizarrely, all of the cafes have Wi-Fi for no reason that I can discern. Like much more than is the extent here. <laughs> um, all the restaurants open really late. Uh, in that we, we were turned away from restaurants at like nine o'clock in the evening because it was too early. Um, all the bars are open until like 5 a.m. People when we start going to bars at 2 a.m. and nobody gets up before midday. And so basically, it's like an entire city on a hacker schedule. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and we were like the worst tourists ever in that I still have not seen like a single site or anything in Buenos Aires. We just like got up, went to a cafe, and like hacked all day. Um, and at the end of that, we had the first prototype of Stripe. Um, after a month. After yeah, after a month, or I guess we, we like the first we had the first production user actually about a week after going to Buenos Aires, um, and what we did was we just like uh, called up a friend who worked at a payment processing company and said you know is it okay if we just kind of send a couple of accounts your way, and uh, and we sort of built sort of this really nice uh, kind of you know, the, the, this nice API and sort of you know interface for setting up accounts or whatever, and then you know when you sort of clicked create account or whatever rather than uh, you know an account actually being created sort of in the financial infrastructure you know. However, that worked. We had no idea. We just like went and called our friend, um, <laughs> which you know scaled to at least a couple of users. Uh, and so we um, and you set it up all manually behind yeah, the scenes. Yeah, this was totally manual. Um, and uh, and I mean, you know, at this point, uh, like we, we had you know, literally two users, uh, yeah. and both of them were like good friends of ours. Uh, and and so Paul Bukait has this great story about um, about building Gmail, uh, where like he kind of repurposed um, the Google Groups code, which predates Gmail, uh, to build Gmail. And so uh, like he built the first working prototype in an afternoon, and you know it just uh, it loaded all of his email into like the Google Groups interface, and he could kind of browse in the Google Groups interface. And he like showed his friends, and they were like clicking through it, and they're like, oh, this is great, you know, but it would be really awesome if instead of viewing you know your email, I could view mine. Uh, <laughs> and, and it was this like very kind of direct uh, user request driven development, um, and it was sort of similar to this with Stripe in that we sort of like built the API that allowed you to charge credit cards, and so you know went on, on user requests from there. And so uh, Ross Boucher was actually the very first user of Stripe. <laughs> um, uh, he was at a company called Tuesday North at the time, uh, and uh, and he's like, you know, this this API is great, you know, but what would be really awesome is if you know you actually transfer the money into my bank account after I you know charge credit cards. <laughs> like, right, fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and and just, you know similar requests like this. Um, and so. So what it didn't actually it, it didn't actually it didn't go anywhere. Because I thought you were setting this up on the back end for him, or no? Yeah, I, I, I can't remember. It's all fuzzy yeah, math yeah, yeah. at this um, point. But, but, but it was very, um, it was very much driven by basically, you know, what things they bugged us to build. Um, sure. And so, we, we launched this prototype, and, and again, I, I sort of, you know, it, 
the, the strike. You're not back from Argentina, or, or yes. Yeah, there... so, so, so by the time we say got back from Argentina at the end of January, um, sort of the the product existed and it actually existed in sort of fairly close form to what Stripe is today. Like just this this really simple notion that you can you can go to a website like by filling it in a really minimal amount of information, you can start accepting credit cards immediately on the internet. And the, like the, the, the fundamental idea is that it should be possible to launch a website and accept payments on it within like 30 minutes. And yeah. you know, before Stripe was um, you know, uh, this multi-day. Yeah, it's week. Day yeah, day it's, day it's five, um, seven business days, right. something. Right. Uh, and I mean, th that's when sort of it got hard, right? Because kind of figuring out what the sort of software sh side of Stripe should look like, I mean, you, you can kind of imagine it. But then like, how do you possibly reconcile all of that with like the financial infrastructure and merchant accounts and gateways and laws and PCI and like, and they're just like the words we knew. Um, and uh, and so we went back to school and we sort of finished the next semester and we decided to, to work on it um, uh, out in Palo Alto over the next summer. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's when we that, that's when we started working full time on Stripe, I guess about a year and a half ago. So you grew one to a thousand just based on word of mouth. How have you grown? You know, is it been the same? Have you guys? It, it, you it's, know? it's all been word of mouth so far. Or I mean, word of mouth, or like people writing about us on blogs, or like the thing that we really like and um, and, and you know is really kind of meaningful for us when it happens is sort of when people just like write about their experience of integrating Stripe, uh, because uh, I mean that that's. Like that's the goal. We just want to make it super simple um, for people to to build a business on the web, uh, and like that is the thing we're kind of always asking ourselves: like, how could we make it easier for somebody to start building a business on the internet? Uh, and and yeah, we, we we've done no marketing so far, um, or, or actually we, we we started like running some limited ads mm -hmm. and like Stack Overflow and stuff like a week ago. But, but up to that, it was it was all either um, word of mouth or stuff that our users wrote about Stripe. Um, and again, I think that's uh, we, sh we sort of intentionally held off marketing for a long time because, again, it's sort of that forcing function again. Like if our users aren't talking about Stripe, well, I mean, then we should make Stripe more awesome, like until they do. Uh, and I think that sort of like marketing and like sales teams and all that kind of stuff, they can be sort of really useful kind of accelerants uh, when you when you're really confident that you have the product right. But I think that uh, it's it's I think that um, I came across this this quote I think it was yesterday from. Um, Eugene Kleiner about like how even turkeys can uh, can fly in a high wind. Um, and I think there's kind of something like that for, <laughs> for startups, um, where like you know with enough sales and marketing you can make even like a really crappy product successful. Uh, and so I think we're sort of but by not doing any marketing for a long time, it's you know making sure that we're like not this like hapless floundering turkey. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so I mean now we I guess we've some nice. Um, at least suggest evidence that you know people like the product and stuff, and so you know na now we're much more okay with sort of like I guess there's two sides to it. Like on the one hand, you want to make sure you're not a turkey, um, but then when you're like, okay, I'm not a turkey. Uh, na the other trap I think that you can fall into is I think a lot of um, engineers, and I mean I, I, I see this trade in myself, um, kind of have this sort of um, I don't know, like this solipsism or kind of this. Uh, this kind of self-centeredness or something where like I'm going to build my beautiful code you know over here in the corner and like I'll wait for the world to discover me and yeah I, I'm just going to focus on all these technical problems um, but I think you, you really have to go and like engage with the world and like talk to people and like tell them about what you're doing and why it's meaningful and everything and and yeah you don't want to do that sort of or like there is some value I think in holding off doing that initially or just like not kind of pushing it too hard because it's it's really nice to sort of to, to, to wait till it gets to the point where people will actually sort of discover you. But once you've got to that point and like you think that you actually have a thing, then I think you should go and tell the world and, and like really bring it to people. Um, and so I think that you know over the, the coming years we'll, we'll, we'll try to do that more, but, um, but I think there's some value in holding off a lot.